But you can't find averages of averages. You cannot, let's just say do averages of averages. You cannot do averages of averages. Okay. In other words, in the case I've made before was, you know, let's say, um, Let's say in math you took, you, we had 20 quiz grades. And on those 20 quiz grades, you averaged 90%. Okay. Well, then um, you took a math test, which is actually worth four grades. And on that, you averaged a 70%, which may be close to reality there. If I asked you what your average grade or your grade is, okay, you cannot, you cannot just take these two numbers and say 90 plus 70 is 160, divide it by 2 because there's two grades and say my grade is now an 80%. Okay, that doesn't work. Can anybody tell me why? Why doesn't that work, Lauren Daffenberg? Because you have more 90s and more 70s. Exactly. Since a quiz is one grade, okay, when you're thinking about this, you've established 20 of these 90s. You have 20 of those all lined up. Okay, one math test grade is only worth four. So you've got 20 90s and only four 70s, okay? Which means you've got a whole lot more on the 90 end than you do on the 70 end, okay? So in order to actually find out this whole comp, and that's what they call it, compound averages, you've got more than one. In order to find that out, you have to find, it has to be totals divided by totals, okay? In other words, if you have 20 90s, okay, that is how many total percents. You could make that out to be 1,800 total percents. You just multiply it out, find out how much total you have. If you have four math grades that are 70 percent, 70 times 4 is 280, okay, total percentage points really you have before you divide everything out, 2,080. Now, how many total grades would I actually have there? This 20 plus these 4, you would divide 2,080 by 24, and that would be your actual real um, percentage. <coughs> uh, and we hope it's going to be higher than 80. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a 90 yet, but it's probably going to be a high 80. 8 times 4 is 32, 16, 19, 660. What is that? Seven, six. What's seven? Let me have your kids. Don't leave me hanging here. It's a little high. It's going to be 86, but it's going to round up to an 87 in the end. Okay. Now, when will the case when it will work? When could you do that? Anybody, Nick? So there's the same number of grades. Right. If by some chance I would end up with four quiz grades that were 90%, and four, because a math test is worth four grades, then you could do it. As long as there's an equal amount of those, in the end, it's going to balance out to be that same 80%. But when there's so many more of this than that, then it's going to be the thing there. Now, let me do one right out of the book, because that's always one, because I like to talk about it. Uh, Sam bought 200 shares of stock at $54 a share. Sam bought... 200 shares of uh, what kind of stock should he buy? Oranges. Who? Uh, like okay, let's go Sunkiss because they're Sunkiss oranges at $54 a share. Um, later, he bought 100 more at $60 a share. Later, he bought. 100 more at $60 a share. So this is 
What was the average price he paid? What was average price paid? Now again, had Sam bought <coughs> 200 shares and these were both not equal, then you could have just added those two together and divided by two. But he bought a whole bunch more at this than he did at this. So the only way to find out the average share price would be to find out, well, you know how many total shares he has, which is 300. But then you have to find out how many total dollars he spent. And the only way to do that really is to take uh, $54 times 200, which is 10,800. And then 100 times 60, which is, wait, that can't be right, is it? Did I do something wrong? Am I right? Yeah. And then 100 times 60, which is what? 6,000. That is right, sorry. So the total amount of money he spent was 16,800. And then you divide that out, cut off the end of zeros. Three goes into that what? Five is 15, 56 dollars a share. Figure it out for the average price paid. So you can't just take averages of averages, you have to find out what they would be on their own. Ah, here's going to be a thinking one. Write down this problem. Am I too fast, Alan? After three games of bowling, Gabe's average score was 86. That sounds about right for you guys. <coughs> After three games, Gabe's, I guess I better capitalize it, average was 88. Ironically enough, we are going home. Uh, what score does Gabe need to average in his next two games? What score average does he need to get? in the next two games to average uh, a 90. So in other words, he bowled three games, he got an 88. He's going to bowl two more. What does he have to average in the next two to get his average, a lot of averages there, up to 90? What is the way you should attack this? How should you attack this? Actually, you kind of need to start at the end and work your way backwards. You need to figure out how many total pins in five games would he have to knock down to average 90? No. How many total pins? He has to average 90 in five games. So that would be like rolling a 90 in five games. So he has to get how many total pins? 90 times 5 is? He needs 450 total pins. Okay, that's the only way to average 90 in five games is to get that many pins in all games. But he didn't get that. We know that he bowled three games of 88. Well, so we have to take those away because we've already used He can't change those. He can't do anything with that. So you've got 388, which is what? I guess I could just do the multiplication. 88 times 3 is 24 and 264. He's already gotten his 264 pins in the first three games. So he needs to get 186 pins in the next two games. Okay, which would mean you'd have to average how many? Somebody at least. Look like Emma Christ. I, we've got something going here. If you need to get 186 in two games, your average would have to be? Exactly. He would have to bowl 93 as an average in the next two games to get his average to go up. Did you kind of get that? Some of this you don't understand until you really have to do it in real world situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one last one. Can we do one more? Sure, let's do one more. The 120 mile, the 120 mile trip 
took uh, three hours. On the way back, on the way back, it only took two hours. What, what is the average speed for each trip and for the round trip? What is the average for both trips and for the round trip? Well, that shouldn't be too terribly hard. All right. The initial trip. The first 120 miles took three hours, so what is your average there? With the Spaniel? Three hours. 120 mile trip took three hours. What's your average speed? Six speed. 120 mile trip took three hours. Your average speed is? Forty. There we go. All right. On the way there, the average was 40 miles per hour, average speed. On the way back, that same trip took only two hours. So now your average speed is? There was 40, back was, Nick, 60 miles per hour. Now your average for the round trip. Now, can I just take the average of these two now? <coughs> I sure can. Why? You can take the average of these because it's the same distance. Okay? It's the same distance. If the distances were different, then you wouldn't be able to. But if, you're, if, if it's the same thing, if, if you have the same amount, then you can I can guarantee you we're going to get 50 miles per hour. I'll do it the other way just because. If you did 120 miles in three hours, you did 120 miles in two hours, that means you took a total of 240 miles in how many hours? Five hours. And if you divide five into, 100, into 240, you get? Wait, maybe it isn't. It isn't the same. Sorry about that, film people. What do you get? What do you end up with? Uh, 428 miles per hour. I'm sorry, it isn't the same. 48 miles per hour for the total trip. 240. I don't know why I was thinking it would be the same. One mile there. Hours would have to be the same and the miles would have to be different. Lucas? Wait, what are you right on? Oh, yeah. Yes, if you disagreed with me when I said you said yes, you were right. I thought you were talking about when you said this was 60. All right, perfect. It's really